a very good morning to all the participants guys we'll be starting the webinar in few minutes as we are expecting more participants to join
thank you guys for showing patience. Uh, we'll be waiting more for five minutes and we'll start the webinar. Uh, we are waiting for more participants to join. We will wait for more for five minutes and we'll start the webinar on PL 900.
Hi guys, uh, good morning to all. Myself Chaitali. I'm your host for this webinar. Uh, guys, please know as we can see there are few participants for this webinar. So we are making this part uh, this webinar into half a day. Like we will wind up this webinar around two o'clock. As we can see only few of the participants are joined. Uh, if any help required during the webinar or after the webinar regarded to this certification, we are there to help you out. I have shared the details in the chat box uh, regarding the mail IDs or you can see the number. If you need any help regarding the certification, you can ask for it. Then thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate your participants your participation in this webinar. So moving ahead and talking about uh, Synergetics. So this webinar uh, is sponsored by Synergetics. So Synergetics is India's one of a kind corporate learning solution company, as you all know. Uh, so you'll get the question like what the company do so answer to this question we browse through our offerings also give comprehensive advisory services to the client who wish to modernize their framework so the solutions which we provide are persona based onboarding onboarding add-on certification solution certification add-on solution reskilling emerging technology training solution Certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption, latest technology training solutions, uh, sales pre sales training solution, practice playbook training solution, and architecting solution. Then, what you will get through the Microsoft Learning, it will give a, a complete and comprehensive learning experience. You will get trained, build confidence to uh, appear for the exam and get certified. That is get recognized. Then this is the journey path like uh, delivery methodology, which includes how you can advance your certification. We have three types of. Learning journey. First is guided self learning. Then we have blended learning. And instructor led learning. So we do provide the training at minimum cost. For that you just have to first complete the fundamental training and then you can go for the advanced certification. Which includes live mentoring, recording sessions, practice labs, Exam prep session, practice test for certification. Then you are ready to appear for the certification exam and get certified. Then here you can see the benefit of getting certified. Benefit to your organization. Uh, you will shift from unstructured learning to structured learning. Build complete uh, advantages, adding profit to your business and enhance the brand reputation. Then how can you advance yourself? So this is the scaling journey. For the Microsoft certification, as you can see over here, there are three types of certification, fundamental certification, then we have advanced role based certification. Then you can go for the expert level certification. Uh, we do provide the paid training on fundamental certification, advanced role based certification, and expert level certifications. Uh, yeah, you can see the fundamental certification on which we do provide trainings are uh, AZ900, then we have AI900. TP 900, PL 900, and SC 900.
then coming to the associate level certifications and that we have AZ104, AZ204, AI102, DP203, then PL100, PL200, 300. Then we have SC series that is SC200, SC300. And in expert level certification, we do provide training on AZ305, SC100, PL600, AZ400. Then the certification offering. So certification will help to increase your visibility, expand your knowledge and skill. Uh, we do provide certification add-ons, onboarding add-on, like short duration modules and more. To, more. to know more about the certification training and the paid training which we do, you all can connect us on the given number and the email IDs shared in the chat box. Then talking about our today's uh, event sponsor as well as the organize, uh, organizer, the community which handles the webinar that is AZ ATC community Azure Tech community. So under Azure Tech community, we have communities like Emerging Technology Community for all. Then we have Azure Tech Community Pune for Punekers. Then we have Azure Tech Community Surat for Surat Techies. And Azure Tech Community Nagpur for Nagpur Girl. Uh, simply you have to just download the Meetup app on your phone or on your device to get these communities followed. I have shared the link in the chat box. So you, will, you just have to go and click on the link to follow the community. You will get the relevant updates on the upcoming webinars, workshop, training, which we do. Then the code of conduct. Please note, uh, no one is allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation while the speaker is presenting his her screen. Also, no one is allowed to do the screen recording. Uh, we'll try to upload this recording on our official YouTube channel. Also, those who are attending these, the webinar, the recording will be provided to you all on your register email ID. Then the speaker for this training is Komal Sharma. She's a Microsoft certified trainer and currently works with Synergetics as a training consultant. Agenda for this webinar. You will get to know more about the certification PL900 certification. Then we have a complimentary batch for PL900. Learning achievement batch you can see. For PL900, which includes the uh, study material, like an overview of the modules, which are there in PL900. Uh, Certification and learning path as well. Uh, you can share this batch on your LinkedIn and Twitter profile. To get the batch activated, you just need to follow certain steps. As you can see on the screen, the steps has been mentioned. I will share the steps and the URL to get the badge activated in the chat box in a while. So you just have to follow the steps to get your learn account open. Or you can say learn profile and just have to click the link to get the badge activated. Once the badge get activated, the modules will be reflected on your profile. Then do follow us on uh, social media platforms like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. Uh, we do. Do provide the information on upcoming webinars, certification trainings, which we do on the platforms. So make sure you follow us over there. 
I will share the links for all these uh, social media platforms in the chat box for you all. Uh, that's all. Thank you all for your time. Now I will like to hand over the mic to Komal ma'am so she can go ahead with the webinar. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chatali. Good morning, everyone. Screen. Okay, so I welcome you all to PL 900 session, but that is Microsoft Power Platform Fundamental. I hope my screen is visible and I'm audible. Myself, I'm the instructor for the day. I'm Microsoft Certified Trainer and associated with Synergetic. I'm Microsoft 365. Microsoft Security Solutions and Microsoft Power Platform uh, Solution Architect. I've handled my engagement on enterprise architecting and learning consultancy solution. And I have offered innovative solutions on Microsoft 365, uh, Microsoft Power Platform and so on. I've done few certifications. So these are the Microsoft certifications for Microsoft Power Platform, Microsoft services and Microsoft security solutions. Before starting uh, the session with PL 900, let me explain you uh, the different power platform certification available and the journey for the same. See, as you all are attending today, the PL 900 session, that is a fundamental session. So when you are starting your journey for any certification, like there are other certification, like SE certification, security, Microsoft 365, Azure and so on. It is suggested to start your journey with a fundamental. I'm not saying it is compulsory, but yes, just if you are new to any platform, it's better to have the fundamental understanding for the same, get the certification, and then it would be easy for you to again uh, just decide what should be your next certification path. Okay. So here, when you are starting your journey with a fundamental that is here for Power Platform, it is PL 900, then you can move ahead. That is associate level certification. These associate level are role based certification. It's totally depend. Uh, like if you are new in your uh, career journey, here you can decide that what role suits to you. Okay, or what is like the role you are going to move ahead in your career or if you're already working in any organization just think what is your current role in your organization so whatever the role you are playing accordingly you can choose your certification like here we have pl100 pl pl200 pl300 400 500 these all five certification are role based certification. For example, after fundamental certification, you want to be an app maker. Okay, then this is the best certification for you PL 100 and you will be Microsoft certified power platform app maker. If you want to go ahead as a functional consultant associate, you can do PL 200. If you are role as an analyst, as a data analyst, and you are more uh, like working with data. OK, so you are playing a very important role, like by collecting the data, by cleaning, transforming and loading your data, uh, making reports and all. In that case, PL 300 is the best choice for you. For developer, those who are having a developer experience, they can go ahead with PL 400 and for RPA, developer means like do are more automation 
or they are a uh, RPA developer, they can choose the certification PL 900. Now, as in our career life, we want to achieve the expert level of our skill, right? So here in Power Platform, we have PL 600. That is the Power Platform Solution Architect Expert. So once you achieve this certification, you can prove your skill as an expert. But directly from fundamental, you cannot directly jump to PL 600. Here there is a prerequisite for PL 600 that is out of 200 or PL 400. You must be having at least one certification. Okay, even if you want to like uh, do PL 200 then directly you can jump to expert level certification. So it's up to you like choose any of the like uh, PL 200 or 400 and then easily you can go for PL 600. Now coming to PL fundamental that is power platform fundamental course. course this power platform fundamental in this course you will be having idea what are the different products that are the part of Microsoft power platform what are the capabilities of these platform like here we will be having idea how we can make application how we can uh, create reports dashboards from the data that we are having how we can automate the processes how we can like uh, whatever the processes manual process that you are performing in your organization how we can automate that how then we will be having idea how we can create boards and all so that all is covered over there in power platform fundamental and by the end of this pl 900 you will be having the fundamental understanding of microsoft power platform When you're appearing for Microsoft PL 900 exam, here there are total six modules that you have to complete before appearing for the examination. And every module holds some percentage. This percentage, you can say it's a, uh, the area that will be covered in examination questions, okay? Like if I talk about the first module, it is all about describing the business value of Microsoft Power Platform, which holds the 20 to 25 percent of the area. Then identify fundamental components of Microsoft Power Platform. That is 10 to 15 percent. Demonstrate the capability of Power BI. Then capabilities of Power Apps. Demonstrate the capability of Power Automate. And last, demonstrate uh, complementary Microsoft Power Platform solution. So by having a look of these percentage, you will be having idea that okay, this part will be this percentage of study area will be covered in your examination. PL 900 exam is the fundamental exam. It's the uh, time is for 60 minutes. You will be having around 50 to 60 questions. Okay, and uh, the passing marks is 700 out of 1000. Okay. So if you have 700 marks, means you will be able to clear the exams. Anyone, any questions so far? If you have any question, any doubt, you can please uh, type in the chat box. I will be considering, I will be answering the same. Okay. Now about the study area, here there are few links that you can start working with. This is for PL 900 exam. Let me just share this link with you. When you will go to that link. Here you will be having all the information for PL 900 exam. Like here you can see the passing score is 700. If you were to scroll down, 
here you have option to schedule your exam for PL 900. Before scheduling it, make sure uh, your country is selected. Okay, so that you will be having the better idea about the price for the same. Then scroll down here again, you will be having skills that will be measured that I have just explained with you. Scroll down. Here you have all the modules. Okay. You can just click on that and start. Preparation for PL 900. If you will scroll up here, you have PL 900 study guide. Let me just click it for you. So here you can have a look. This is really a great link for the learning for PL 900. Here you will be having idea. There are other useful link that will help you to prepare for PL 900. When you will scroll down here, you have all the skills that will be major. It is given in detail. What are the topics which is covered? In each module, like here, you can see for first module, these all are the topics that will be covered. Scroll down. Here you have the topics for other modules. Like here in Power BI, uh, sorry, demonstrate the capability of Power App. Here you have the subtopics like identify basic Power uh, App capability. How to basic uh, build a basic canvas app, how to build a model driven application and so on. So you can just use this link. There is one more very important link. I just want you to explore this link like those who are really going to appear for the first time for any of the Microsoft certification exam. This is really a great link for you. This gives you the sandbox environment for the exam. You will feel like that that how the real examination uh, platform looks like. OK, so and you will be having idea what type of questions can be framed in your examinations. So if you are first time appearing for uh, any Microsoft certification exam or PL 900 exam, please go through this link and just try to uh, explore this platform and try to appear for the question. I'm not saying that it is for purely Microsoft Power Platform. No, it's not like that. It is this overall questions are there just to give you the feel of uh, exam environment. That's it. So these all are the very important link. Now we have one more link that is PL 900 course. This is the link that Chatali was asking you, uh, explaining you about. This is the course link. Here you have all the details uh, about all the modules. Here you will be having detailed explanation of each and every topic that is covered in Microsoft Power Platform. Like here you can have a look. See the study material with the diagram and all each and everything is written over there. So once uh, you complete the training session today, uh, before appearing for the exam, I want you all to go through this link and, and complete this course, okay? Here you will notice at the end, you will also get the knowledge check session. This will uh, help you out to analyze yourself that really the module that you have just covered, it is clear to you, you have the better understanding about the same or not. I'm just sharing this link with you all. OK, 
Okay. So before moving ahead, I will share one more very important thing that is for uh, labs for PL 900. So that is. So when you will go through this link, you will find whatever the labs are covered under PL 900. That all labs are written over there. You will get each and every lab step by step. It is so easy to follow all the steps. Like for example, this is for lab one where you will be having idea how to set up the lab environment. Okay, see each and every step is written clearly under each and every task. Like for data modeling, how you can start working over there. The link that you have to click each and everything. And before starting. Here you will be. Just clicking on this link and just click on this download zip. When you will click on this link. You will be having all the resources that will be used during this lab will be downloaded to your local machine and you can use uh, further these resources during your practice for the labs. OK, so I'm just sharing the this link too. OK, so that was all about the study link and the important resources that will help you out for the PL 900 study and the exam preparation. Now, before starting with my first module, I just uh, wanted to explain you uh, what uh, would be the flow of the session. So I will be explaining you the basic concepts of each and every modules. And then uh, last one hour I will be taking for the lab demonstration. OK. In between, if you feel like any point is not clear or you want me to explain any topic, please put it in the chat box or your query. You can easily put it in the chat box. I will be answering the same. Now, before starting, one thing I just wanted to know from your side. Uh, may I know how many of you already having idea about Power Platform? At least a basic understanding about Microsoft Power Platform. You can type yes or no. Guys, please quickly answer. OK. Thanks for the reply. Basic understanding. OK, great. Or if you have done any other certification for Microsoft, uh, you can also type in the chat box that yes, you have done a Z certification or SC certification and other certification. OK, so Ravi is saying he is having basic understanding and he has an easy run. OK, great, uh, great. OK. OK, you are Power BI developer, but no certification. OK, no problem. Then I suggest you, uh, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing the correct name. That is Kesuvan. So Kesuvan, uh, PL 300 would be the best certification for you. Like if you want to go with PL 900, go with the PL 900. You will be having good understanding about Microsoft Power Platform. What are the other services that are uh, they are available in Power Platform? And then I uh, recommend you to go with PL 300. This is really a good certification and uh, you will be having your uh, like basically you will be able to prove your skills about Power BI. OK, a dot net developer. OK. Madheshwaram, uh, you are writing dot net developer. So if you are going to explore uh, your capability in Power Platform, so for you, I would uh, 
uh, go with PL 400 after PL 900. That will be the best certification for you. And you will feel like what are the developing capabilities are there in Microsoft Power Platform if you are going to uh, develop any application or any flows over there. OK, that's great, guys. Uh, thank you for answering me. So just keep on uh, interacting with me. Whatever the questions you have about any certification regarding PL certification or uh, PL fundamental, whatever doubts you have or the questions you have, please type in the chat box. OK, so I will start with the very first module. Let me just uh, open that. OK, so we are starting with our first module. In our first module, we will be having overview of Microsoft Power Platform. What are the capabilities of this platform and what are the different products that comes under Microsoft Power Platform? Yes, you might have used other products of Microsoft, uh, like some of you who are developer, they might be having idea about the uh, Visual Studio and all. Uh, those who have worked like basic uh, office applications like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, these all are a bundle certification, a bundle software, I can say. Okay, we have the bundle of uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint in your office uh, software, then we have uh, all uh, on .NET, then we have a database, or uh, everything is there in a single package. Same way Microsoft Power Platform, you can say it's, it's a package. It's a bundle of different capabilities of Microsoft Power Platform. So here we will be having idea what are the different components are available with Microsoft Power Platform plus the features for the same. So when you are in Power Platform, as the name itself, Power Platform, this is a single platform where uh, you can start your journey as a app maker or as a data analyst or a, a automation, or you can create uh, boats and everything. See, just imagine like when we are working in any organization, we all must be dealing with some data, right? And we need a space where we can keep our data safe, right? Now, data is safe, but somehow you have to access that data too. Okay. In that case, we might need an application that will help us out to get that data from the database or wherever it is safe. Or again, we have to put the new data back in the database. Right. Now, when you are using any application, when you are performing any task, for example, uh, sending any file to your boss, sending uh, reminders or getting approvals, right? Or it may be uh, when you have received an email, you might be having attachment, uh, you might be saving that attachment to your OneDrive or any other folder. Just imagine that if you're day to day tasks are getting automated or it is digitalized. Right now. Let's for example, we have application and we are working with any website. I want there should be a chatbot. Chatbot means nowadays you will have you have uh, experienced different applications and website where when you open that application or website, suddenly a chatbot open. That says, hi, I'm so and so. How can I help you out? This is what? What do you think? A real person is sitting behind the scene? No, it's not like that. This is a virtual boat that is talking with us. It is, you can say, for the 100% availability. Because a human being cannot be available 24 by 7. In that case, we have the option for the boats 
that will be answering at least the frequently asked questions can be answered, right? And now, if you want that, you must be having an external facing website, okay? Or the data that you have gathered at the end, somehow your decisions maker need that data to be or take, or for taking any decisions. So whatever I have just discussed, just imagine all the capabilities starting from processing your data, management of your data, keeping your data or the database, then uh, accessing that data via application, then processing of the data automatically or performing the tasks automatically, working with the boards, chatbots, your external facing website, everything all together you get in a single platform that is power platform where we get dataverse dataverse is microsoft inbuilt database management server i will not say it's a database like other database like we have uh, access we have uh, excel we might be having idea about sql and all so this dataverse is not only a database but it's a database management server. Then if you have to work with application, you want to create a custom application as per the requirement of your organization. Here you can use Microsoft Power Apps. These Power Apps are so easy to use. Or I will say overall this Microsoft Power Platform, it's a low code and no code platform. If you do not know anything about the coding, developing, no issues. You can anyhow start working with Power Platform. For users, it is so easy to create the application. Even in your whole life, you haven't created any application. But this is the platform which, will, which is going to help you out to create a custom application for your team or for your organization. Here you have Microsoft Power Automate. This Power Automate will automate your day-to-day -day tasks, your day-to-day -day processes, and would convert into the automate processes or to the digital processes. Here you have Power BI. Power BI will help you to get your raw data and information and convert into the interesting or or your uh, visualization. You will be able to create reports. You will be able to create dashboard. That will give you the insight of your data. As a data analyst, you can explore this platform. You can uh, process your data. You can uh, load your data. You can uh, share your reports. You can uh, do on a single uh, report as a team. You can perform a collaborative task. It all can be done in Power BI. And for virtual boot, here we have Power Virtual Agent. This is the platform where you can create interactive chatbots for the end user. And you can easily integrate that boards with your Power Pages. The Power Pages is what? It's an external facing website. We have Power Apps. But these power apps are only accessible for the internal user. This is not for the external users. But if you want to go with the services to be used by uh, other users that are not the part of your organization, external facing website by using Power Pages. And you can easily integrate your virtual agents, your power boards with Power Pages. Now, here you have also the power to use the machine learning capabilities. This machine learning capabilities, for that, here you have AI Builder. You can use AI Builder and integrate the machine learning capabilities with your power platform. Now, coming to data connectors. Data connectors is what that is going to help you out to connect different services with each other. You might be using Power Application and you need to connect Power Application with Dataverse. 
you want that data which is there in dataverse to be used in power app or power automate you want to integrate or you want to connect your power app with power automate or power bi with power apps or any other 365 services microsoft services that you want to connect with microsoft power platform here you have data connector so here if you have uh, if i could give you the understanding of microsoft power platform you can easily understand the business value of microsoft power platform like here as a non developer as a user who do not have any understanding about the coding and all you can easily start working with microsoft power platform you can start building application you can start creating the flows automated flows okay and you can become more productive for your organization and if you are already having idea about the programming knowledge coding and all here this is the platform which gives you the ability to explore your capability or to improve your skill so we are starting with power application this power application uh, power app where you would be able to create a different type of application like here you have options to create canvas application you have option to create model driven application now you must be thinking different type of application what is the mean between that so here you know we have different type of application like some application we use in our mobile application okay we always use our mobile to use that application some application that we use in our tablet or we use in our uh, web application like in our laptop and all by a web so it depends what is the need of use to access the data so here we have the canvas application where uh it is something like the canvas you might be having understanding about the canvas we that we use for the painting right so what happens when we make a painting we use the canvas it is generally like we are putting our imagination to that painting the look and feel is it is in our control how it should be attractive how it should be look to the end user if you want that kind of application you can create canvas application and mainly the purpose is that it's not like that it cannot be used by a web or tablet it's not like that it can be used but your more focus is towards look and feel like here on this screen you can see we are we are we are uh, we are using different images uh, different colors different ui controls like text box buttons and so on for this we have canvas application another side we may have the requirement we are not uh, we are not bothering much about the look and feel but yes we are more concerned towards the data part the data processing so the organization who are more towards the data processing part they are having data first approach in that case they can go with the model driven application in this model driven application we work with data models here we are more towards the processing business processing for example uh, let's take the example of order processing we are first the order there is a order placed accordingly you are uh, moving the order is placed and then accordingly you have to deliver that order so right now what is the place of the order where it is what is the second party third party and then the end user if you have to work with that processing part the best choice is model driven application so i hope this power app part is clear and for both the type whether it is canvas or whether it is model driven here you can start easily working and developing this application without any coding knowledge now in your day to day life as i said you must be performing different tasks like for example uh, receiving the mail sending the email or sending any file to your boss for the approval or uh, if you are your uh, approval is should be sent automatically whenever you are uh, 
saving any file to that folder automatically you should be getting any notification and so on so for that here we have microsoft power automate this power automate is going to help you out to convert your day to day boring task or boring uh, repetitive task into the productive task into the digitalized task or i must say the automated task where you can automatically uh, save your attachment to the one drive folder automatically notification will be sent automatically approval will be sent and granted right so all the things can be done with the help of power automate as when we are working with application or we are working with the power platform or in your organization real time we are using different type of data the data may be the real time data it may be historical data it may be the data you are getting from uh, online services or any telemetry data every time you have to deal with that data right and the data you know nowadays businesses they have the challenges to use that data in a way that it should be more informative and it should be more productive so for that data should be used in a way that as a decision maker you should be able to take the form decision for your organization in that case as a data analyst you are basically telling a story to the end user how you are using that data you are getting the data from the different data sources you are cleaning and transforming the data if it is needed you are loading the data you are responsible for creating reports data modeling and then finally you are going to responsible to share that reports so end user the decision maker they are dependent on the report that you are making to see the importance of the report and the data analysis that you are performing so here in power bi you would be able to perform this task very easily this power bi is a platform that will help you out to get the data from different sources here you have a platform that is uh, editor power query editor where you can perform the cleaning and transforming of your data here you can create the data models here you can create interactive reports you have different visualization available over there right and then here you have power bi services that will help you out to put your report in cloud now once it is available in cloud you would be able to share that report among your friends colleagues and your organization now as i said you have power virtual agent that will help you out to create interactive chatbots the chatbot will be interacting to the end user solving their queries giving them answers or for the high availability now for the requirement when you have to face the external user you want to share your information and services with the external user as uh, you can say uh, b2c in that case you can create the external facing website by using the power pages and again by creating that without using any coding knowledge now for all the data that you are dealing with whether it is for uh, application whether it is for automation whether it is for power bi you can put all your data in microsoft data world as it's not only a database but yes it's a inbuilt microsoft database management services it's a you can say it's a cloud database where you can put all the data and it can easily integrate it with any of the microsoft services even you are using dynamic 365 you are using application you are working with power bi any of the platform you can easily integrate your data wars capabilities with other services so in power platform you have different data services okay like inbuilt data wars optimized data gateway you may have azure services you may have 
uh, dynamic 365 services or office 365 services for processing and automation we have ai builder approvals you can use power automate flows power automate dpas rps and then finally for the user experience we can uh, use this capabilities via microsoft 365 product dynamic 365 microsoft project microsoft teams power bi virtual agent and other services so you can use this microsoft uh, power platform to increase your productivity you can get uh, integrated with sharepoint with office 365 services with outlook with onedrive integrating all the services together in a single platform you can convert your day to day activity into the digital activities you can create uh, the collaborative solutions like using power platform with other services like microsoft teams microsoft uh, sharepoint and so on you can also integrate dynamic 365 services in microsoft power platform you can also integrate with the azure services and pull it all together using a single power platform and having the uh, and consuming the features i must say of this platform so this was all about the business value of microsoft power platform in meanwhile if you have any doubt any question with the introduction that i have just given you can put your query in the chat box uh no there is a question does dataverse have billing like azure storage no uh dataverse doesn't have any billing like azure storage here when you work with power platform there are different uh uh licenses options that is available for microsoft power platform like for uh my e3 and e5 license you can use microsoft 365 uh microsoft power platform correct e3 and e5 you have uh you can use the features of microsoft power platform let me uh share that information with you here you can get the licensing for power application then for uh, power bi and so on so here you can see you have the option for power app premiums there is power app per user plan also yeah this for power pages and ai builder so you can explore this thing it can be purchased as add on and anyhow by e3 and e5 it is available and for for power bi pricing is depend on the data that is uh, being used in your organization So here for Power BI, we have Power BI Pro, Power BI Premium, and Power BI Free. So you can explore the different capabilities of all these 
license is option. With your E3 and E5, Power BI Pro is available. See here it is written. Power BI Pro is available with E5. And for the other features, you have to use Power BI Premium and so on as an add-on. Here you have other option that is uh, AI Builder. AI Builder is available for the trial period. That is, I think for one month it is available and it can be extended. Uh, the exact count I cannot tell you, but yes, at least three, four times you can extend that. No issues with the same. And one more thing I would like to share that is like, if you do not have any trial environment to practice for Power Platform, I'm just going to give you the idea. Uh, This is the link I'm sharing where you can create the developer environment for the practice for Microsoft 365 services and Microsoft Power Page Point. So you can use this link. You can start with any of your personal email ID, it may be Gmail or Outlook email ID. So just create the developer account, which is available uh, for I think three months. And when you will go to Microsoft Power Platform, once this part is cleared now, once you have Microsoft 365 admin account, then you can go to Power Platform. It is already logged in. That part is logged in directly. Let me just show you in an incognito mode. Let me just log out. Here I wanted to show you the starting uh, landing screen. This is the link. Uh, I will share it with you. So 
So this is the link. I'm just answering for the same. There is a question: What kind of apps can be built in Power App? I'm just coming back to your answer to your question. Let me just explain this part first. Okay. So when you will clicking on this link, like for example, you are done with that uh, developer account. Your trial environment is ready. Like here, as I told you, the link that previous link that I have shared. When you will be able to get your trial environment with Microsoft 365 developer account, you will be the admin. Okay. In that case, a dummy environment will be created, or the sandbox environment will be created. Some users will be already added over there. Then you can go to this link that I have shared. Okay, that is for powerapp.microsoft.com. Here, what you have to do, don't click on sign in. You would not be able to sign in directly. You will have to click on start free. Okay, let's click on a start free. Now here you have to put your email ID, the admin ID that you will get by that trial environment, and then you can start your free trial for Power Application. I hope this is clear for everyone. Whether you are using Power App, Power Automate, or Power BI, whatever, don't click on sign in. Click on start free, and then start the free trial for Power Platform service. But very important, the very first thing is that go to that Power 365 developer account, create a trial account, and then start exploring the Power Platform capability. Now let me close it. Okay, I hope this much was clear to you guys. Now uh, coming to this question, See, I'm uh, having another module where I will be explaining the same concept about the different type of application. Though I have already uh, given you the idea, the application type that was the canvas application and model driven application that can be created. Okay. Yes, we can discuss this in detail with other modules. Let me close the previous slide. Okay, so in our next module, we are going to identify the different components that are the part of Microsoft Power Platform. Here we will be having idea what are the different administration capability of Microsoft Power Platform, what is Dataverse, and what are the different connectors that is used in Microsoft Power Platform. So when you are working with Microsoft Power Platform, as an admin, you can go and explore the Power Platform administrative capabilities over there where you can the very first thing that is creating the environment. So what is environment? See, like in real life, imagine uh, I can see the environment that is my home environment where I am living with my family members. I may have another role and responsibility in this environment. I may perform different tasks as a home maker. OK, but now when I'm in my organization, when I'm in my office, there is a different environment. There is a, some a professional environment, official environment. I may have a different role uh, to be performed. I may have different tasks and responsibilities. I may have a different way of talking with my colleagues and all, right? I may have a social environment where I may be uh, interacting with my friends, with my relatives with my neighbors and so on, right? As in a real life, we have different environments. Same way in Power Platform, we can create different environments as per the requirement. Generally, there are three types of environment. The first one I can say it's a production environment. Production environment is a real environment, okay? Where you are 
consuming all the services you must be using application or whatever the flows are there which is by, which is by consumed by the end user but before actual consumption of uh, any services any application and so on first we need to create that right so for that in any organization there is a team of developer who work of the application and services so here we can create a developer environment where developer can create application they can create flows and basically they are working in a solution for example i want a automated process for order processing so my development team is working for that task for that solution it may be that in that solution or solution the word i'm using it you can say it's a bucket where i can put together all the similar object for example application uh, data was table um, i may be use some flows cloud flows and so on so in develop environment developer environment i may be working with a solution i may be creating a application for the organization need i may be creating some flows i may be creating some virtual boards i may be creating some power bi report and we'll put together in a single solution okay now i feel that now my solution is completed the development part is done so after the development what should be done should i directly share that to the end user anyone what do you suggest if i am working as a developer i am working on a solution or i have made any project what should i do should i directly send it to the share it to the end user or there is anything else i am missing in between anyone uh there is a question what should we select instant yes it is instant uh, set box correct uh sure ravi i will try to put the knowledge check session to before the end of the session is it fine before the end of the session i will be uh, using the knowledge check correct i have got the correct testing before directly share the solution to the end user it is always it is a compulsory task to first test it you know we just try we just put the test users and they just test our solution our application they just uh, try to find out any flow any error in between we try to put some raw data some random data over there so for that testing we can create a separate environment that is a test environment and when the testing is done you can send that solution to the end user that is a production environment so this is how there is the importance of these environment and these environment are totally separated from the other environment got it i hope you are clear with the types of the environment developer environment test environment and production environment there is one more environment that is trial environment like in your case as we are working with a trial account first we are doing the trial of all the capabilities yeah uh, yes means we are exploring the capability of power bi we are actually not making any project right we are just testing it we are just making a trial for the same so you would be able to create trial environment okay if possible i will show you how you can create the trial environment okay so move ahead now in power platform as we are uh, working with the integration part where all the services are integrated we can uh, uh, attach one platform with another like teams outlook one drive power app power automate sharepoint all together in a single platform but power platform always make sure that our data is always secure whatever the data you are dealing with you will be having full control over the data whether it should be shared 
to whom it should be shared and when it is shared those person whether should be able to create a new data they should be able to delete it or not they should be able to edit it or not so all the cap you can have over there what it so this power platform make your data and information secure in power platform admin center only admin can log in to power platform admin center either he should be a overall global admin or power platform administrator can log in to the power platform admin center okay so when you go to the power platform admin center you would be able to see the different environment available you would be able to create environment even uh, the user who is having environment maker role can also come and log in to admin center and he can create the environment so the analytics means what is the uh, activity is going on in the environment how the other application how the flows which are being used by the users then you would be able to see the resources where you would be able to explore the capabilities of your environment you can see the data integration means how services are connected with each other and then you would be able to explore the data policies you can control over the data you can control the limit of the data words means like this much data only should be saved in the data words right you can see the actual use of the table which is created in data words so this is what the capabilities you get as a power platform admin i hope this much part was clear then we can move ahead towards the data words part any dev of test environment has separate see why this dev environment and test environment is separated because as i said in every environment we may have a different set of users to be interacted right we may have different roles and this one i want a set of user be the part of my test environment but i do not want them to be the part of developer environment so i cannot keep everything together in a single environment let's run power platform we have all the environments separated once the solution is ready it is developed you can export it to the test environment where only the test user will be added okay and the related role will be assigned to them and when the testing will be done and finally it will be shared to the related user or to the real environment yes uh, does a power platform follow sdlc yes it follows we are making the solution it is developed it is shared it is imported and exported it all it is exactly followed as it is as a developer you make for other solutions see uh, these apps are not see when you are importing and exporting it to the other environment it doesn't log it is it's created in a very compressed form so it is very easy to import and export them the entire solution that's why i said in place of putting everything here and there we make the solution solution is a bucket where we put all the things together like for a solution i need application i need flow i need a power bi file or any dashboard everything together in a solution and when i am trying to export it to the another environment it is created a local copy in my local machine okay in a very compressed form and then finally it can be exported to the another environment now as you are talking why we need different teams in the environment see as a developer we have different role and responsibility testing i cannot give them access no data i cannot give them access as a developer do have in my organization that's why i will keep the testing environment separated from the developer environment i will only add the testing team in that environment they will be testing on that environment with a particular role it may be 
a developer may have full right on a data was table he may be creating it he may be deleting it he may be editing in all everything but for tester for the testing team he would be able only to view that data only that role will be assigned to them right that's why a testing environment is always separated from the developer environment there is one more question i mean in power apps developer will only test without any in i couldn't get this uh, question i mean in power app developer will only test without any qa team see developer are going to only develop the application they need another users na for the testing of that environment or for the testing of the application here i am not talking about the qa team i am talking about the testing team yes for the power apps too correct see it's not like that uh, you are always going to create a bulk solution it may be that you may have a simple application too okay okay it may be you need a application only for your team like you may have a team of 10 user you may be creating an application for your team in that case you do not need a develop develop environment and testing and so on you can create the simple application for your team no problem i hope i could give you the answer anyone else anything uh, any question so far oh no it's not like that power apps can be created for a single user it can be created for a small team it can be created for the whole organization it can be for a, a module depends what is the use for the same it can be created for hr it can be created for finance team it can be created for manufacturing team it can be created for the uh, for the front end users depends and generally what happens there is one more uh, thing that is data words for uh, teams there is one more very interesting option data words for teams so if you have a teams you might be using team application okay so in that team application even you can create a application for your team and you can start use, using that application what is mostly used app in power platform see ravi i cannot say this is the mostly used application in power application uh it totally depend on the need and depend organization to organization as i said there are two type of application the first one that is your canvas application and second one you have model driven application in canvas application if you have uh, the more concern about the look and feel and it is used by the end users okay you can go with the canvas application if you are more towards the data processing part or the business processing part you can create the model driven application so it totally depend on the need and need of the organization and the users generally when it is a front the uh, i can say it is uh, for the front end uh, front end team mostly uh, the canvas applications are used for the back end team or for the processing who are more related with the processing you know uh, they use model driven application we need to build custom one so no most used uh i can say you can create a custom application you can create from scratch but here you get the options to use the templates also so even if you want you can explore the templates okay any other question so far then i can move ahead for uh, data wars part let me quickly start with the data wars part microsoft data wars so in data wars here you have whatever the data you have it is totally secure first as i said 
it is totally authentication only authorized person would be able to get the data right we can provide the user role as per your role only you would be able to access your data if your role is only to view the data only you can view accordingly you will be able to read write or delete and everything like all the access can be given to you and as per your access only you would be able to use your data it can be used with any other services of microsoft power platform and microsoft 365 services you can include the business rules over there you can create the logics you can uh, create the calculated columns roll up columns like that for example i want to put a rule a rule in my organization that uh, for example employees okay i am having a data wash table that is used by the hr people and whenever a new employee is going to join they have to enter the data okay and they have to uh, mention the type of the employee whether he is part time or whether he is full time and there is a rule in my organization when a employee is full time he should be able to get 30 leaves and when he is a part time he should be able to get only 15 leaves for the whole year so as it's a rule it should not be manually entered the total leaves it should be automatically done so what i can do i can create a rule in my data wars table that when the type is selected full time automatically the leave should be 30 and when part time is selected automatically the leave should be 50 similarly we can create some calculations for example uh, when a employee is going to join generally the logic is that whatever is the uh, final interview round after one month it should be his joining date okay so for that i do not want that manually should be enter the joining date automatically should be assigned the joining date hr people just have to put the end interview date like the last the last interview date and it should be automatically cal calculated and after exactly the one month that should be the joining date so that all the logics i can put in my data was stable if you want any uh, duplicate value detection in all that all can be easily done with data wars then this data can be used for modeling purpose for reporting purpose for data modeling and so on and then storage capabilities like it can be so like as you are using any other rdbms system it can be used and it can be used as a storage system and then finally it can be integrated with any of the services with microsoft power platform services dynamic 365 or office 365 services so when we are working with the microsoft data wars this is you can see a open source system and it can be a shared data model so when we are starting with a data modeling part here you can create n number of tables you can create the table uh, from scratch that is the custom table or there are already some tables created that is known as system table like for example visitor table there may be appointment table that is you can use that for your solution and then you can create the model you can create the relationship between these table and you can work for your solution there are generally two types of table as i have just explained custom table and the standard table custom table that you create for your specific business need and the standard table which is already created inside the data wars and it can be used in your solutions when you are creating a table this table is actually the combination of rows and columns if i say column for example there is a employee table in that employee table column may be a uh, name address date of birth joining date contact number email id these all are the columns every column is having a specific type for example email id 
email id the data i am putting it is a specific type of the data if it's a name it's a text value if it is a contact number it's a numeric value then so on every column holds the value of its related type only if there is a name i cannot put any address and also on got it so these all are the call if i say record or row means a single record of a employee single record of any product single record of any student this is called a row when i keep on adding new rows and keep on adding new records and new data to my data i hope this much was clear to you now as i said when you are working with data verse you may be carrying different tables all together in a solution for example i may have a table for employees i may have a different table for uh, departments i may have a different table for business unit i may have a table for uh, orders for product for sales so in that case it is very important to create the relationship right relationship means when i am using employee data i may need to check employee is a part of which department so i cannot put all the details together in a single table we generally make a practice to create a table and put the specific information only employee then only employee information if it is product only product information if it is territory only territory information and so on and at the end just connect all the table all together so that when at the end i have to get the entire detail like which uh, employee is uh, is contributing to which sales what is the product which was sold so i could get the related data so here we have two type of relationship we have one to many relationship and we may have many to many relationship one to many means there are parent table and child table so it may be in a parent table it there is only one record for example if it is a employee table only one employee information will be there but when i am going to check the sales the same employee can be participated in different sales activity correct so this relation is chip is known as one to many relationship if it is a many to many means uh for example there is a list of trainers okay there is a table where there are different trainers and there are a table where there are different attendees like you all are attendees okay so as a trainer i may take different batches where may be different attendees group of attendees same way you attendees can get different other trainings where they may other trainer so this relationship is known as many to many relationship i hope this relationship part was clear if anyone any doubt please type in the chat box I mean, like Power BI or Power Automate, what are you say? You first question for. Okay, so Ravi, as you are asking uh, that organization why they use this platform, so it's totally depend. Like uh, some organization they use this for Power BI capabilities for exploring the Power BI capabilities. Some may use it for developing the application, creating the applications. Okay. generally there are some uh, organization they are using it as a solution for the solution means for the entire solution it's not only a application is going to help us out along that application i need data verse along this application i need automation right so i have to combine the capabilities of other services too it may be i i cannot use uh, a power app i cannot use power pages 
i cannot use virtual boards depends some organization they are using virtual agents they are uh, using power platform only to create the uh, virtual boards so depends uh like user sign up for application for certain program within organization uh i couldn't get this question data words also stored on a structured data uh on a structured data if you are uh, talking about the images and all yes we can uh, store that <laughs> okay you mention a use case okay okay got it okay fine i really appreciate that you guys are putting your queries and interacting with me i really appreciate that thank you so much okay okay got it got it okay so business rule uh, as i said in data wars we can create the business rule like if you have to put any logic for example if uh, i am a v uh, it may be like for example in my organization i am a vp or a team leader or i am only a team member so for example i am selecting for any application or i am logging for any services as per my role other options will be enabled or disabled so that can be done with a business rule okay or for example i want that if this values enter this should be automatically filled as i said if employee type is full time right number of leave should be 30 if employee type is part time number of leave should be 15 and so on so you can easily create business rule for your data board but yes business rule is defined only for a model driven application Now, when you are working with Power Platform, here you can use different connectors that can uh, connect to your Microsoft Power App Automate, Power Application, or your Logic Application. Here you have more than three hundred connectors available. But still, if you feel like no, this connector is not going to help us out, you create the custom application. Okay, like for example, if you have to connect with any API, you can create the custom connectors, and these custom connectors can be used via your uh, flows and your applications. Okay, so that was all about my current module. Yes, it can be used for sure. It can be used. Now we're starting with where you will be having idea about the different type of applications that can be created in Microsoft Power Platform. <clears throat> After this module, I will take you to that uh, environment of Microsoft Power Platform, and I will uh, demonstrate the capabilities uh, or what are the different options or services are available over there. Okay, so in Microsoft Power Platform. here you will be having idea what are the different types of power applications are available so in power applications as i said it's a low code and no code platform as a user as a business user 
you can create a application for you for your team or for your organization right when you are creating that application you can start from scratch creating the custom application or there are already some templates available you can start using that template and create your application there are two type of application that is and model driven application you can also integrate the ai capabilities that in again machine learning capabilities but again without using any code knowledge it is so easy to use the ai builder capability let me take a example for example in your organization you have a front desk okay then maybe some visitors visiting to you as a front desk or uh, front uh, desk uh, staff you have to take a note who was the visitor what was his detail his contact number his name so on just imagine how tedious task it is and how time taking it is if you have n number of visitors then for visitors it may be the time consuming task they have to keep on uh, waiting they may be in a queue they have to put their record just imagine if you have an application with your front desk users they may have a application they just have to ask for the uh, visiting card from the visitors they have to use their mobile phone a mobile application and they just have to take a of that visitor card and as you have taken the pick on the visitor card automatically all the information will be captured and will be saved in your application just imagine your at least 15 minute task will be completed with 5 seconds so this is what there are n number of example like for example in your organization you have invoices you have to process the invoices you have to uh, you are getting the invoices from the email you have to download that whatever the information are there you have to read down manually and uh, and type it somewhere for the record but i said i take uh, uh, tell you just once you have to create a automated flow and next time whenever you are receiving any invoices from the email automatically it will be saved to your one drive folder it will be uh, uh, this invoice information will be saved to your excel sheet so that all can be done with the ai builder and this ai builder can be used via any application or via any flow come to the type of application as i said there are two application canvas application or model driven when you have a scenario like where you have to create the interactive application for the end user like as a end user i do not know where to uh, click or where to process for them for the end user i will create some picture i will create some button that click here i will put some arrow go there and so on this is what ui interface got it so when you want this kind of interface you should create canvas application these application can be used via tablet or via mobile application this for the end user who are consuming it via mobile or via tablet go with the canvas application model driven application as it is more for the data processing if you feel like that your application is being used on web then go for model driven application okay where you will be having a uh, total processing part and number of pages uh, you may be having interactive dashboards it all can be created via model driven application it it that is work uh, with not only with a web application but yes it can also be used with mobile and tablet so no issues with the same but yes with Option you can use uh, the business rules, the logics that all can be integrated. Now, when you are using business uh, power application here, you have the security and administration part too. Means as a app maker, you can uh, put the administration part like authentication and authorization. 
means users who are logged into that application as per their role and uh, uh, authentication and authorization, they would be able to access and see the data. This is just a case study of a uh, airport where uh, 76,000 workers uh, were there and there were two lap travelers in a single day. And there was a person, Samit Sani. He was a security worker over there. And what used to be done, like uh, there were front users and they have to build the application. And there was a problem that they have to handle two lap travelers each day. So for handling this, they have created the application and that application were able to be uh, uh, like guide uh, visitors or guide travelers to give them information as per the language they were selecting. So this application solved the problem of Heathrow Airport, Heathrow Airport. And for them, uh, like uh, Samit Tenny was really like, uh, he was. The developing and coding still he would be able to uh, he could create that application for that airport now when you are going to build an application there are some basic elements that you need to know here you will be using power app studio like app if you remember when i was logging to power application i used make.powerapp.com this is what power app studio here you have two options to use the app format. One, mobile or second, tablet. Next, this is I'm talking about the model, uh, sorry, uh, Canvas application. Now, when you are creating the Canvas application here, you can use galleries, you can use forms. Here, there are different input controls that can be used. There are some intelligent controls that can be used and all like if you are having uh, uh, the uh, developing capabilities you can explore different options different functions over there this is the power app studio looks like the same i have logged it here you have different option for the app format as i said you have different templates also you can start creating an application from that template too if you want that data should be displayed in a form way, you can use forms. Generally, form is used to get the entry from the end user. You have the input control like uh, radio button, you have checkbox, you have text box, list box that can be used as an input control. Here you get some intelligent control too. You can use functions the same way, like if you are an Excel user, you might be having idea that we can use different functions, different enumeration, different uh, calculations can be done here in Power Application. Once your application is done, you can share that application and you can you can share it to the different users or the group of users. And while sharing again, you can have a full control on your application like users uh, would be able to view data on your application or they should be able to edit something that you have created the application so you can set the permission while sharing the application now coming to model driven application when you are creating the model driven application your look and feel is like this application we were working is screens like, uh, for example, when we are working with PPTs, we have different slides, right? Same way when we are working with Canvas application, we have screens and number of screens can be created. When we are working with modern driven application, we are working in different pages. We can keep on creating pages. When we are creating the modern driven application, the very first approach is the data first approach. So you must be having, you must be starting with the data was given. Okay, so modern day one application, you can data was table will be used in modern day one application. 
for model driven application you can you, you cannot use any other databases but for your canvas application you can use any of the database you can use uh, your sharepoint you can use excel you can use any other database but for model driven application you have to use only and only database so first you need data you need tables call you have user interface means how user is going to interact sorry how user is interacting so you need a application that is a, a ui interface it is more kind of a responsive interface there is a site map site map is what how one pages is connecting to another pages how a user is moving from one location to another then we have forms and views so what is forms I'm going to get a new entry you need forms when you are going to visualize the entry you have view so as a app maker you are going to design both forms and views once this is done now coming to the logic part where you are putting some business rule you are putting some business process flows you are putting some action you are putting some cloud flows and so on and for the visualization you can uh, integrate any power bi report or dashboard so when you are going to design the model driven application this is the look and feel of that uh, to uh, for the power app studio where you can create the model driven application so when you are creating the application here you need to create the application you can create the forms you need to add some components you have to edit the form so that end user would be able to enter the information and then finally you can visualize that in the app design so that was all about the application anyone any any question so far uh kangana no pl 900 examination is not free but from our side you will be able to get some uh, i think some uh, chetali would be able to give you the clear idea about that uh, certification fees and all uh, chetali are you available i think later on she will be explaining that how we can uh, you can get some discount in uh, pl 900 certification fees earlier it was like uh, microsoft have given some uh, uh, options to go with that free certification but now it is not available but yes chitali shodi will help you out how we can uh, give this exam in discount okay so guys it's time for the demonstration i will take you to the power platform where i will show you how uh, we can start working with power application i will show you how we can create the flows then i will take you to the power bi dashboard and power bi reports so but i think it's 12 o'clock right now let's take a break for uh, 15 minute then i will come back and we'll start with the demonstration part I hope you all are ready. So let's take a break. We'll come back sharp at twelve fifty. Okay, that's great. Don't go anywhere. Just take a. <laughs> cup of tea and a coffee and then come back okay
Hello everyone, I'm back. I hope you all are there with me. Guys, can you please type yes in the chat box or show me a thumbs up if you all are there with me? Okay, guys, thank you for the response. Okay, so now I'm going to take you to the Power App portal. Link I have already shared. You have to type make.powerapps.com. Let me just increase the size. Okay. So this is the platform where you will be landed. Before starting, I will take you to the first Power platform admin center so for that here if you will notice at the extreme right side upper side corner you can see the setting gear bar where you can get the admin center just click on that so another tab will be open where you will be redirected to admin.powerplatform.microsoft.com now here as a admin as a power platform admin, you can explore the different capabilities of admin center. When you will click on environments, now here you can see I have uh, three different environment available. Where you can see this is my default environment, like all the users of power platform they all have access to the default environment that is accessible to everyone. Now here, this is a trial environment. You can create the trial environment and the limit for the same is for one month, right? And this is a Microsoft Teams environment. As I said, you can also create application and flows for your teams also. Now, if you have to create a new environment for that, just click on new. Just give the name of your environment. Right now, already one environment is created. I would not be able to create a new one. But yes, just to show you how to create a new one, I will show you. Like, for example, I have given the name PL demo. Then you have to select the region. Now you have to select the type. Here you will notice I have a sandbox environment. Then we have sandbox environment is for the testing environment. Okay. Then we have developer environment for developing the solution. Then we have production environment that is the real environment. And then you have the trial environment. So in your case, as you are working in a trial environment, select the trial. If you want to write the purpose, you can write. Here you have to click on add a data verse data store. Make sure this option is clicked. Click on next. Here, uh, don't change other setting like the language and currency. Here, if you want to restrict the environment to the particular security group, you can click and add a security group. Then uh, here you will be getting option to deploy sample application and data. So make sure this is clicked so that you would be able to create the simple, uh, sorry, sample application and data. So once it is done, you would be able to create that application. Here, I am not getting the same option because, as I said, in a uh, 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 in a Power Platform, at a time, you would be able to create only one trial environment. So in my case, already one trial environment is created. So I am not able to create the another one. But in your case, already no trial environment is there. You can create a new one. And after some time, you will notice that new environment is created here and listed over there. And once the state is ready, you are able to use and work that environment. Now here you have other options to be explored, like you can see the analytics of your environment. 
like the analytics you can see the analytics for data words the usage performance uh, whether the resources are being used or how it is used for power application and power automate here you can set up the policies the data policies that i was talking you about that how data should be that data policies will make you unable to uh, uh, to share your resources in a secure manner and that make sure that data is not misused or shared outside the organization for example i am here in this environment now here you will notice in each and every environment you get the option to add the security role add the teams and users okay so here you can see we have different roles available and as per the required role that can be assigned to users like here you can see we have uh, aib role that is for power bi and all that is for application basic user these roles are for power uh, agent like those who are working on power boards and so on then here we have other roles that can be explored that is for desktop flows and on and so on there is a system user let me just yes there are two roles that is system administrator and system customizer the system administrator will be having all the roles which is available over there now if you have to assign the role like select that role for example if it is system customizer <clears throat> here you have option to just a second okay so here if you can see these tables uh there are different tables and you can select that table and can assign the role or you can go back to that setting uh click on user here you have option to add a user for example i'm adding a sample user add now it is asking which role you want to assign to this user so just find out the role that you want to assign for example if it is service writer click on save and along with that role that user will be added so here if you will notice has been added to this environment but security role is required in order to access data please use man security role panel to manage the role so it is asking me that if you want to provide this role you have to go to the security role panel to manage this role but this user is added let me just refresh that so this user is added but the role is not assigned to him okay now let me go back to the environment <clears throat> so 
there are other settings related with the environment you can explore it later on like here you have the detail of the same just click on see all you can check it out for other details and explore the other information now i will go back to my power app portal now here for example i am going to start with a new application let's click on create now here you have a option to start creating that application if you want to start from a scratch like from a blank application you have this option if you want to start creating any application from dataverse table or from sharepoint list or from excel sql and so on you can select that required app, uh, option when you will scroll down here you have different templates to be explored these three templates are for model driven application every sample uh, application or every template is having a business case okay considering that scenario if you feel like uh, this uh, scenario is matching with the your requirement you can select that So here for canvas application you have you can see their name is written canvas application means these all are the templates for camp, uh, canvas application you can explore there are n number of applications available and number of templates are available over there for example i have to use this template now this template is a cost estimator which is going to estimate the cost for my customers okay if you want to give the name for this application like for example i am giving it as estimator test and click on create it may take the uh, few seconds <laughs> okay so i have my app <coughs> sorry let me just play this this is power app studio where you get all the tools to create your application <clears throat> so this is the application where these all are my customers okay so when a customer visit to you he wants to estimate the cost or he want to get to know the cost as per the product that he is going to choose so here <clears throat> for example if you have to add a new job let me click on it now here i have to add the client name for example i am writing my name phone number email address address city and save the job now you will notice this uh, client detail is added now for this client begin estimate so i have to select the room name basically it is for the uh, marble tiles and all for the selected rooms so for example i am making it for kitchen the length of my kitchen is 10 by 10 i have to select the flooring style <clears throat> so the laminate i am going to choose this one and now i have to review the estimate just click on review estimate 
and now you will get to know the final estimation once it is done you can click on submit estimate so that estimated will be mailed to that client whatever the email id he has submitted so this is the application the template that i have used similarly you can use any of the template as per your requirement like help desk call center and so on appointments if you want to make any changes you can go to your application you can customize that like here you can notice in this screens right now i have uh, n number of screens okay 1020 <laughs> as i said in canvas application you can work on screens and these screens are navigated here if you have noticed when i am going to play this application i am clicking on this button <coughs> i am redirected to another screen if i am clicking to this icon i am navigated to another screen when i am clicking on this button i am navigated to another screen so there are screens which are navigated from one screen to another so here you can keep on adding the screens and navigate them okay so that you can create a connection between these screens and on each screen you get different objects that are added different components like for example text box group gallery and so on and whatever the component you are selecting you gets the property from the same you can change the property you can customize this for example here you have a data source if you want to edit like for example i do not want to name or i do not want to make any i want to make any changes for example in place of address uh let me just click on it i want to see the email address and see now it is changed if i will click on play you can see now in place of address i have email address so similarly you can just explore other properties you can make changes try to customize in your way so this is what is so easy way to start working with a template customize it in your own way make the uh, changes in the color uh, look and feel and start making that application as your own application like here at the top you get the option make my own app so you can make this app as your own application and you can uh, share this application with your team members anyone any question so far ah <clears throat> uh, yes power bi it has a mobile application itself oh that was not my phone number <laughs> okay so how to publish pbi chart in application okay so for that uh if you will go to insert here i have option for charts so here if you will notice under power bi uh, sorry under charts i have power bi tile so you can click on that power bi tile and that tile will be added now look for the workspace for example if it is my workspace uh my dashboard and this tile so i have just added here like that only but you can create another screen and properly just uh use that tile here in this application so this was a very easy way to uh, use that power bi tile in your canvas application i hope i could give you the answer yes it is very useful for kpi care card correct there is very man uh, you can also use power bi dashboards reports style in your model driven application too okay so i am just quickly deleting it 
so i hope it was clear to you everyone this was about the canvas application now i will take you to the model driven application okay uh, let me show you one more thing like if you want to start from a uh, blank application let me just click on that blank when you click on blank here you have different other options like canvas application model driven application or for power uh, pages whatever the option you want to choose just click on create and you will go to that portal for model driven application i will take i will show you my solution that i have created so for that i will click on solution okay so i have created one solution that is employee onboarding solution so as i said when you are starting working with power platform it is always suggested to start with a solution so for solution there are also pre built solution available over there if you have to create a new solution click on solution give the name of the solution like in my case if it is in so i have given that name in your case accordingly you can give the name the publisher the publisher is what whenever you are creating any new object any or table any application it, it is published basically so for example when it is published there is a publisher name required like who has published whether it is published by a group published by a user published by a organization so so that you can identify that object with the name of publisher or you can search out that object with the name of the publisher so you can create any publisher if it is not available or it is not listed in my case like i have already a list of publisher that i have created like synergetic rani cloud contoso and so on <clears throat> select the publisher and just create that and your solution will be created like i will show you the solution um uh, so when you will create the solution and you will open that here you will get the environment like this i have 20 objects right now so it is showing me the count like three tables two site map one cloud flow choices and so on in your case the count will be zero <laughs> as it is a newly created solution so the count will be zero so you can start creating new objects okay so for example here i will show you the tables which is created over there <clears throat> Now here I am having right now three tables. One is employee onboarding table, designation table, and employee onboarding flow. Let me show you the table. I will click on employee onboarding. In this table, I am having all the details of employee. <clears throat> so here you can see i have different tables available different columns available inside this table i also have a business rule added let me show you that business rule So as I said, you can create a business rule for a data warehouse table. So here I have created a simple business rule that is for the leave. It is calculating the leave. Here you can see the stream right side of my stream. I have selected the employee type. If it is full time, then the number of leave should be 
thirty, and accordingly the another rule. So here, in the text view, if it is full time, then number of leaves should be twenty four, else it should be twelve. So similarly, you can create any of the type of the rule. Like if I take you to the components, here I have the condition, action, like any recommendation. Let me just deactivate it. If your a uh, rule is in uh, active mode, it cannot be edited. So I'm just deactivating it just to show you the other options. So now you can see I have other option. If you want to show any error message, like if user has put any value and you wanted to show your error or wanted to give the recommendation, if you want to lock or unlock any field, so all the options are available to create a business rule. You can even set the visibility, like the particular field should be visible or it should be hidden. So everything is available over there. Once it is done, you can click on save and activate them. Okay, now coming back to my employee table. Now here, if I will take you to application. So right now I am having uh, three application. One is the campus uh, Canvas application, and another two are the model driven applications. So let me just show you how this model driven application works. So first I will take you to the edit mode. Uh, So this is the app studio for canvas application <clears throat> where you will notice i have added pages like here you can see i can keep on adding new pages and every pages hold some entity or the view that i have created for example here if you remember the employee onboarding table that i have just shown you the same I have added to this current page. Okay. And here, this is the dashboard. This is the Power BI dashboard that I have integrated to my Power BI. Uh, sorry, my uh, can, uh, model driven application. It says some error refreshing, no problem. I will show you this one. Now I'm clicking on play button. We'll show you how this application actually works. Now you can uh, here you can notice that how my uh, canvas application was looking like and how my this model driven application looks like. So here it is more kind of a processing way. And there it was more like a UI interface, the look and feel, the buttons and so on. So here, if this is a form. Uh, sorry, this is the view. Whatever the data which is already available, you can view your data in this format. OK, if you want to add a new entry, you need a form. OK, like for example, if I have to make a new entry registration form uh, and so on. So here, this is the form where I can start putting a new entry. If it is a uh, employee name, for example. Okay. 
here for designation there is a designation list now how i am getting this designation list because if you notice i was having another table that was a designation table and that table is related to i have created a connection between employee table and that designation table that's why i am getting this designation list over there now i have to select whether the employee is full time or contract date of birth uh for example just let me select this email id phone number <clears throat> that's it now here if you will notice this is a another way like if i am clicking on save now i am getting this view right how this view is coming because right now i do not have to go and click on the tab it is automatically will take me to the next stage this is a business process automation right once the one process is done automatically i will jump to another process it like it may be uh this information is filled by hr person but this it detail will be filled by it admin now what is going on here in this application when a employee is going to join hr person are going to put the basic information like personal information his email id date of birth and so on when hr people are done they will pass the process to the it it admin who is going to set up the account set up the devices set up the vpn and so on once his information is done now his role is completed he will click on next stage means his task is done <clears throat> now the manager activity is started manager has to select the business unit for that user he has to give some product information and so on and finally he will click on next stage now employee will fill his activity whether his induction is completed information is completed biometric is done or not once it is done he will click on finish so i hope you could have little bit idea at least difference between the canvas application and the model driven application and how canvas application was being uh, used and how this model driven application is being used where i am more concerned about the processing like the order processing in order processing there are different set of users who are involved in each and every processes once my process is done like there is a delivery boy there is a person who is in a part of distribution there is a person who is in a man who is in a uh, warehouse and the end customer whether the product is received how was the quality he will give the rating and so on in that case we can work with the model driven application i hope this much was clear to you guys anyone any question so far with error handling okay so for error handling here we have let me just go back see in this power pages uh, sorry in this uh, model driven application here you can create the business rule like if this information is entered by user uh, he should get the recommendation or he should get some error message and so on okay or basically here this is what the end result i am going to view the end user but behind the scene everything is done on this model driven application and on this table like here if you can see there is a onboarding table when i am clicking on this table you can see data experience here i am having forms and view what it if i will click on forms there is a main form 
and the exactly same form will be visualized in your model driven application that's why i said when you are working with model driven application you are totally depend on data words table how you are designing the view and form same will be visualized in your end application see this is the view this is the form right exactly the same form we were getting if you want to make any changes any editing that part can be done i will go back same way for the view so everything basically you have to design here with the table and then finally you are going to use that table to your application so this was about model driven application now coming to canvas application in that canvas application we have a just let me take you to any of the in a second this is actually a app checker uh, i wanted to show you that So in Canvas application, we have app checker. So whenever there is any mistake or error, that app checker will give you the idea that where error is and what error is. So you will get the hint of the error, and you can just go and follow the recommendation. So here, if you can notice at the top, there is an app checker. Whenever there is any error, it will show you the red dot. This red dot will show you that yes, there is some error that you have done. It may be any uh, data connection related error, any any of the error. It will just show you here app checker and will give you wherever there is error is and will give you the recommendation for the same. So this is how you can just control the errors. Onboarding forms can be created. No, here you do not have to go to MS form. As I said, when you are working with a table, in the table itself, you will be able to customize your forms, and that forms will be directly used in the model driven application. Onboarding forms. Can be Okay, onboarding forms can be created using MS Forms and SharePoint. Ah, uh, no, I couldn't get your query exactly. Like, ah, uh, what you are saying in your SharePoint, you can create application. You mean to say like that? the use cases uh no it's not like that it's not uh, the forms part only uh as you can see it's not only we are using the forms but yes we are more towards the processing part concentrate on the what the processing we are more towards the data processing part where your data is processed from one stage to another and that processing can be automated like you can uh, add a set of user who are concerned to that particular stage when their task will be done another set of user can perform and that data processing that is more for the uh, model driven application and canvas as you are writing canvas is more like forms model driven is like android app it's not like that model driven application is not like android app app you are writing opposite canvas application is more like android application where in canvas application you are creating a ui interface 
any of the uh, mobile application you can use and the same you can design using canvas application but for your internal user and model driven you can basically use it via web or it is most used via tablet where different set of users who are involved and they can only visualize their related page see when you are asking for ms forms ms forms the only funda is that you are using it as a form for collecting the data from the user users cannot view the data which is entered or other users have entered on the list of the information form purpose is only to collect the information that's it and same in sharepoint here you get the list the list is going to hold the data but other processing is not possible i hope i could give you the answer now i would like to uh, okay the one you showed with screen setup for app is canvas application ah uh, yes for the screen see currently this application this one where i am having a screen this is the canvas application and this employee onboarding processing that was the model driven application wait for few seconds if you remember i have used the site uh, uh yeah estimated cost estimator application that was the uh, canvas application and the current employee onboarding that is the employee uh, model driven uh, sorry can model driven application right sorry yeah this one this is model driven application where i am having pages if i will play this so here you can see if i will click on new right now it is this is a view and if i want to go and click on new entry these all are the processes so in my case i have four processes employee information by hr it admin manager and day one activity so these processes are being performed and this is how my data is process for one is staged to another this is this is what model driven application and here you can just mapping your pages that how user can jump from one page to another or one table to another and this is the canvas application or the cost estimator in that canvas application you have n number of tools you can use table you can use forms you can use a uh, button you can use uh, labeling and all n number of things you can use but that look and feel you cannot control over there you can only customize the view and form that's it ah uh, see if you are asking where can we see collected data from canvas application see it's up to you if you want to visualize that data to your end user Ravi, I am coming back to you. Your query. Okay, so when you are asking the data which is collected, if you want to show that data to the end user, you can use a form. You can use table in that Canvas application itself, and you would like to navigate user from one screen to another. That can be navigated, no problem. And yes, you can extract to Excel or any other format too. That is again possible. So there is one question from Ravi. <clears throat> I tried using Data Wars and had a app created for account, but could not see data while running through data sources. Bind it. Account table that you are using that is a system table. Okay, there must not be any data in that account. That's why you are not able to see any data. Just check it out. 
in your account table do you have any data if it is not so you can put some sample data and that will be visible over there let's try using that finally how will the app appear for end user can you share one app with us to fill data uh i have uh, you know i think uh, you have missed that part i have used both the application that how end user see this is in play mode only when i click on new i would be able to enter the new information this is the user i have added <clears throat> okay you can enter the information this is how the end user is going to look like this information once it is done click on next stage and finish now if you want you can save and close and you can check whether the data is entered or not like finally when any order is processed finally you can get the list of that order which is processed so here i can get the <coughs> sorry the list of my new user that is yeah this is kriti that is added and the lalit what it same way i have already used the canvas application where i have already demonstrated how a end user is able to put the entry where i have uh, demonstrated how uh, for the cost estimator how a new client detail can be added how a new uh, i have used a kitchen to estimate the cost and all so that i have already demonstrated okay how to share it okay i will show you uh ravi how we can we run the query where you want to run the query i couldn't get how you can like where you want to run the query in a application or what okay So Ravi, as your question is, if you want to close place any validation to have only ten digit. So for that, when you are a data for mobile number, there while designing the data for table, you can uh, control the size of the form, uh, of the form, uh, phone, uh, or you can set the property. If you remember, I have shown you the property of each an object. in that property again you can use uh, for phone number even for password that password should be shown as uh, star not the exact number that all can be controlled by using property uh ravi we do not need to run any query for the data source i will show you just give me a minute uh let me just close it i hope this part was clear you okay, guys i will go show you two demos so in one demo first i am going to show you how we can start directly creating application from the data source so in my case i am using dataverse
let me click on create for example my data is there in data wars okay so here it is asking me the connection so i will use data wars now here you can use any of the medium like if your data is in sharepoint one drive and so on for example you are using any excel file so you can use uh, one drive and that excel file which is saved in your one drive that can be accessed over there so i will find out my table that is employee onboarding i will be using that that is so easy directly using the data source and start with that application so if you will notice i am having right now two data over there this may be another table not that uh, table i have used so you can see i have two records right now i can check the detail if you will notice here by default three screens are added one is the browse screen this is the browse screen this is the detail screen and this is for the edit screen i hope it is clear same way whatever you have a data in your sharepoint excel and all you can use that method too you can try that now i will go back i hope it is clear how we can directly use data base yes you can say data validation as i said data validation can be done it can be at the user side or at the backend side validation i have shown you that this rule that i have created Ten digit number. Ah, uh, see, right now I cannot show you that because I have to show you the uh, Power Automate file. So whatever the already available things are there, that only I can show you. so right now i have just uh, used this method and here you can see at the extreme right side of left side of my screen you can see this data set data base is added over there similarly you can use any of the data for example if i want to add any data like for example any data from the sharepoint so you can use that sharepoint Just find out any uh, site that you have. You will be which is available in that site, and that will be added. Ah, uh, cannot add the data sales duty data loss prevention policy. Okay, there may be the data DLP policies. That site is not being added. But if there is no DLP policies is uh, attached to that data source, it can be easily added. okay now i will show you one more example uh for example i have to add another screen 
Okay. Now here I want to add Okay, so I will add data table. This is for if you have to uh, visualize any data. For example, I wanted to use this table only employee onboarding. So now you can see that this is the data which is listed over there. So this is just the tool I have used to display my data same way you can explore other options to display you can use table or view and all here I have used data table. So I hope this much was clear to you guys now I have to move to power automate part. Uh, you are showing this canvas. Yes, this is the canvas application employee onboarding. So I have used the employee onboarding uh, data was stable in my canvas application and my model driven application both. OK, so now I need to go to power automate part. OK, so now here you can see in this portal only I have option to go to the flows. Just click on that flows. Okay. So now here you can see I have different flows which is already created in my environment and I'm getting the list of these flows. So when you are here on this portal, you can create different types of cloud flows and UI flows. Cloud flows which works on your cloud applications and cloud services and desktop flows which works on your desktop applications. Okay. Now coming to the cloud flows, again I have different types of cloud flows that can be created. For example, I'm having automated cloud flow, I'm having instant cloud flow and scheduled cloud flow. Now what is the purpose of these cloud flows? See, when you want, there should not be any user intervention, right? That flow or that activity should be done automatically. For example, whenever a new email is arrived, automatically whatever the attachment is there should be saved to your OneDrive folder. Or whenever any file is updated, automatically a notification should be sent or an approval should be sent to the boss. These things are done automatically. You do not need any human intervention. That is called automated flows. Second, instant cloud flow. Instant cloud flows are those flows that are depending on any user. When I'm going to click on any, any button or when I'm going to start the flow, when I'm going to activate the flow, then only it is going to work. Generally, these instant cloud flow works for power application. If you remember in power application, we have option to use buttons. Like submitting of any data, submitting of any forms or record, or when I when our user I'm making any entry over there, when I'm jumping from one option to another. In that case, you can use instant cloud. It is depending on user's activity. And third one that is scheduled cloud. 
schedule means you are going to schedule on any particular day any particular date or any particular time even let me take a scenario for example uh at the end of every month i have to share my activity report means for the whole month like i am working from home okay now daily i work in the work i have to perform i have to record it somewhere like today i have taken the session uh monday i have worked on this client or i have worked for uh, attended this meeting and so on. i can keep on adding in my sheet at the end of the month i have to send that file to my manager it may be that i may have missed that activity i am on leave or it may be that uh, i forgot that it is sunday and i couldn't send that So what I will be doing, I will automate it so that every month end that file should be automatically emailed to my manager. Got it? So I will schedule it on every month end thirtieth or every month end thirty first, and so on. Or you can also do this like every weekend you have to do some activity, so you can schedule it for uh, Friday or for uh, Thursday, and so on. For example, yearly you have to send a you have to send a reminder that yearly there is a meeting, annual meeting, or monthly there is a meeting, and so on. So that flows can be done on a scheduled basis. So we can create and whatever the flows are created at the right side, you can see what is the type of the flow. Like there are some automated flows, some instant flows, some uh, scheduled flow, and so on. Here, as we have just explored in Power Application, we have different templates to be used. Same way here, we have different templates to be used for creating flows. So for that, let me just click on Create. Oh 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 oh. Uh. Let me go back to flows. Okay, so from here I will directly go to Power Automate. That is make dot Power Automate dot com. So here again you get the option to go to different other Power Platform option. You can directly go to Power BI, Power Virtual Agent, Power Pages, and so on. So here, if you will notice, I have this templates. So here, you can notice we have n number of templates. We are already the services which is being used are added. You just have to find out which is for your benefit. Okay, like in my case, I'm using um, and two. Ah, uh, no. So I am just using a template. I want that whatever the attachments are there to my uh, Outlook email should be automatically saved to my OneDrive folder. So
I'm just looking for that template. Save. Uh, Yeah, so here I have got save Office 65 email attachment to specific OneDrive for business folder. See why I was looking for this template specifically because when you are working on uh, Office 365 environment here, Outlook email you do not have to use. Okay, here it is known as Office 365 email. Outlook email is your personal account. Okay. And here you are not going to use OneDrive. Here you have to use OneDrive for business. OneDrive is your personal OneDrive and OneDrive for business is your Office 365 OneDrive. So I'm going to use this uh, template. Now here it is saying that you have two activities, so two services that is being used. And you have to authenticate yourself for these two services like for Outlook and for business. Click on continue. You can give the name for this uh, flow that is 900 demo. Now here you have to uh, just see your flow is actually ready. You just have to customize in your own way. So here you have to put the folder when like whenever you are getting any email. So email you are getting in your OneDrive folder or any shared folder you have or any other folder you have created for yourself. So you just select the folder. I am fine with inbox. Now. It is using a condition. Do you want to put any condition like from? It is coming from a particular person, from money, from your boss, or from any other person. You can put this condition over there. Now, if the condition is fine, like if it is sent from, like for example, I'm using my email ID. No, 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 it is not. Okay, I will do one thing. I will just keep it blank. If yes. Now here it is asking where you want to save that attachment. So you have to give your OneDrive folder path. So here I will select uh, attachment folder. That's done. Or file file name, whatever is the attach, attachment name that will be done. Whatever the file content is there in attachment, I am fine with this. Same way you can do with this. That's it. Let me just save it. Now here it says that your flow is ready. We recommend you to test it. So before actually sharing that flow to the actual user, it is suggested to test it. So here you have option for testing. Just click on test. So how you want to test it? Of course, we need to test it manually only. I will click on test. So if you will notice here, just near the test, we have flow checker. If there is any mistake in your flow, it will be displayed in your flow checker. So here for that uh, 
testing this flow, I need to send a new email to the inbox. So for that, I need to open my Outlook email. I will send an email to myself and will attach a file. I have to attach so I have to let me just select this file just for testing purpose. So I just wait whether I have received that email or not. So as I will receive this email, immediately my flow will be activated. Let's just wait for a few seconds. In the meanwhile, whenever whatever the activities are going on behind the scene, you can see as in a testing phase. It's taking too much time to receive the email. Okay, it is uh, saved in this folder. Actually, I received the email, but it is in a different folder. That is my new folder. Uh, Okay, let me do one thing. I will edit that. And I will make the changes in place of inbox. I'm using my new folder. Features. Inbox. My new folder. I will save and we'll test once again.
okay so we'll see by email let's check I have got the message. Your flow ran successfully. So if you get this message, it means your flow is working properly. No error you are getting. There is a green tick for each and every step. Means your steps has performed perfectly. Got it? Now let's just check whether I have received that file in attachment or not. So for that, I will open my OneDrive. And uh, here I have to go for my attachment folder. Yeah, so here you can see this was the file that I have sent as attachment. It is automatically saved to my OneDrive folder. So this was just a demo to show you the capability of Power Automate that how you can you can use this platform and you can create the flows by using the template or even from the scratch. So I hope this demonstration was clear to you guys. Anyone any questions so far related with the Power Automate? Else I will move to Power BI. Are you asking about the Power Automate desktop uh, being used using so slow compared to VBA? Uh, sorry, I have not worked with VBA. I have worked with PDA. I do not uh, feel that it is little slow. So I cannot compare with VBA as I have not worked with that. I am purely, purely the user of Power Automate desktop. Regarding the recording link, um, Chaitali is going to answer you for the same. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, it is, uh, it will be uploaded to YouTube channel. That YouTube channel link will be shared. Yeah, Chaitali have shared already. Thank you, Chaitali. Any other questions? It's pretty slow. Okay, so no questions so far regarding Power Automate. So now I am going to move to Power BI. Okay, so for Power BI, I will directly open to Power BI desktop. <laughs> yes, I know it alone take one day, even a one day is not enough. So entire Power BI uh, is takes three full days at least to fully understand the Power BI. But yes, I will quickly give you the overview of Power BI. Let it just open. I don't think that most of uh, you are aware. You must be aware with Power BI, but all are not aware with Power BI. Some are totally new to Power Platform. 
okay so till the time power bi desktop is being over let me give you the uh, understanding of power bi see power bi is what it's a part of microsoft power platform so as as uh, we are working in any of the organization you might be using different data so for work on that data like performing the data analysis we use power bi where we get the data from the different sources we clean and transform your data we load that data we work on data modeling okay and then finally we are able to create the reports and once our report is ready we are able to share that report now in terms of sharing one more thing i remember flamban was asking about sharing the application uh so for that let me just complete that part too Power BI always make my system very slow. Let me just close this. so whenever you have to share any flow or any application go to the list of that application or the the uh, the flow that is just open for example my this flow is created now here at the top you can see i have this share option it's running little slow just so here you have option to share this flow just click on that option now while sharing of course you are a owner now whatever the new user you are adding just type the name of that user like for example i am adding employee to now when you are adding to any new user make sure that user is having fully access to both the services which is being used in that flow like here it is asking whether he has access for outlook and business okay now this user is being added okay so he is added over there i will go back now let me show you with the application how we can share the application here you have the list of uh, application which is available in your environment 
So whatever the application you want to select, just click on that three dot. Here you have option to share. Just click on that. Now here you have option to directly add this to your teams or you can share it. Just click on share. Now here you can uh, enter the name of the user. For example, if it is employee. Now here you are going to add him as a co-owner. So you can say. This user will be added as a user only, but if you want to make him co-owner means he can uh, contribute to this application. He can uh, uh, he can edit that application with you. You can add him as a co-owner. So just select that and share. So now this user will be added as a code. So it's up to you. You can keep on adding the user as a viewer or as a code. I hope this much was clear to you guys uh, regarding the sharing point. Okay, so I will come back to this query. Let me first complete the Power BI part. Okay. See, uh, uh, I would like to answer here only. See, as you are saying, can we leverage Power App with Tableau? See, as it's a similar uh, platform like a Power BI. So as Power Platform here, you have the inbuilt capability of Power BI. It's better to use the Power Platform capability only. This makes your integration so easy. And whenever you have any changes, anything done on that part, it will be automatically reflected over there. So it is always uh, suggested to use the Power BI, not the other services. chart in power platform the power as mayur uh, i i just said that power bi is a part of power platform right so when you are using the chart and uh, someone we use every only no power bi yes you are right that some organization use tableau but as users or organizations who are uh, coming to Microsoft 365 services or they are coming to the Power BI services. Now they are using Power BI. As Power BI or Microsoft 365 is a different platform as now most of the organization they are using Microsoft 365 services. That's why nowadays Power BI is in more in demand. People are coming for uh, they are asking us to train them for Power BI. Why? Because it is so easy to use Power BI with other Microsoft 365 services. And you must be having idea that now many organizations they have opted for uh, Microsoft 365 services. And with Tableau, it is not easy to integrate with the uh, you know 365 services. But on the other hand, you can easily integrate Power BI reports and dashboard with any of the 365 services, like with uh, your uh, live report, with your PPTs, with your Power application, and other platforms. And for publishing, as I said, you can publish it to any of the application. You can use it with model driven application. You can use it as a report. But yes, as you are asking for the best practices, it is always suggested that when you are publishing your report, but while sharing, make sure whatever the content or the visualization you have in your report, is it really required to share the entire report? Or the better it is suggested not to use the report, but to dashboard. Now, what is the difference between report and dashboard is that Report is a collection of different report pages. You can say it is just like a file that you can keep with you in your bag and everything. But it is not that every time that entire report you are going to share with someone. It may be the particular page 
a particular piece or information you are going to send. So here in Power BI, you have option to create the dashboard. So pick up the important visualization from your report and pin it to your dashboard. It is just like a real uh, organization, real your office place where you must be having a dashboard and you pin a piece of paper or information to your dashboard, which is easily visible to you and to others. So it is always suggested not to share the uh, entire report, but to share the dashboard. OK, so now coming to uh, Power BI part. So when you start with Power BI desktop, you get this type of a screen. Here you get option to directly get to your data or to open any of the Power BI file, which is already created or you are working with. If you have to get data, you can click on this option. For example, I am going to use Excel. So just click on that data option. Here you can see you have a number of options to add and start working with Power BI. You have different Azure services, uh, Dynamics 365, Google Analytics, online platform, any file which is saved in OneDrive, your CSV file, JSON file, XML, and a number of options are there. For example, I'm using Excel. Just select any of the file. Like in my case, I'm using this Adventure Work database. So in Power BI, basically, we start our journey by getting the data. When you get your data, you can load the data. But before loading, you have to check whether your data is really the clean data. Now here I mean to clean data is that we human beings, generally when we work on any Excel file, especially we put some row span, call span, we mark some value, we put some headings and all. For Power BI, it is not considered as a clean data. Clean data means when you are starting with Excel, always make a practice to insert a table, put a proper column name, and then start adding the data. Working with tables makes a crisp boundary of your data, and then it is easy to be processed. Now, when you are adding any database, whatever the tables are there will be displayed. Here you also can get the option for the sheet when you are working with Excel. It is suggested not to use the sheet, but to use the table. Here you can get the preview. Whatever the data is looks like. And here you can load or transform your data. As I feel this data is clean, I will not transform. I will directly load my data. Once it is loaded, it will be displayed here in this extreme right side of my screen, that is data section. In this Power BI, I have other few more options, that is report view, means this is where I'm going to create a report. I have this table view, where I can view my data, what is the data which is available in my tables and all. And the third one, that is the model view. You can see extreme left side of my screen. This model view will show you the relationship between each table. OK. Now in Power BI, we have Power BI, the combination of software, services, mobile application, and connectors. When I'm talking about software, we start our journey with Power BI desktop. Power BI desktop is a software that is freely available. You can download it from online. I just type Power BI Desktop download and you get the link for the same. Once it is downloaded, it is downloaded to the local machine. Here, you get the medium via Power BI Desktop to connect to your data source. As I have just connected to my Excel source. Once it is loaded, now you are ready to work with that data. You are able to create reports. But as it's a desktop application, you cannot share that 
reports to other. For that, we have Power BI services. Power BI services is a cloud service. Once your desktop report is created, you can publish it to Power BI services. But for Power BI services, you need a trial account or E3 or E5 account. Okay. So once it is published, you can go to Power BI services and use that report. Now you can use that report and you can share it with others, you know, colleagues, or you can work as a collaboration. And why Power BI mobile application? Mobile application is for end user where they would be able to uh, consume that report. Like the users who are finally going to view your report, they are not going to contribute or they are not going to make any changes. For that, there is a mobile application that can be easily downloaded via Play Store or App Store. Then connectors. As you are going to connect your Power BI reports with any of the 365 services, Dynamic 365 services, Power Platform, other services. So for that, there is a connectors. I hope this much was clear. Now, as I do not have enough time to show you here the reporting part and modeling part, I can take you to the Power BI services where I can show you the reports that is I have already created and published. And there I can show you how you can share that report. So let me just close that because this Power BI desktop it just slow down my PC. So this is my Power BI services where I have login with my trial account only. Here, when you are publishing your report, basically you are publishing to Power BI workspaces. Now this workspace is what? Power BI workspace is what? Where it is something like your virtual office. Okay. Here, my workspace is my personal workspace in my organization. So whatever will be published to my workspace, it will be accessible to me only. Whenever I want, I can share it, any report. But here you have also option to create workspaces as per the requirements, like as per the group, as per the teams, and you can publish to that workspace too. Like here in my case, I have my workspace. Now here you can see I have some report and dashboard available in my workspace. So if I have report available, every report is published with a data set which is being used for that report. Here you get the option to share that report. I will click on share. Just write the name of the person. And here you can copy the link. You can mail that person or share as a PowerPoint slide. And here you can control the access. Whether it should be used by your organization people. Via with the people with existing access means only employee two will be able to access that or with a specific people. For example, I'm sharing with this employee. He cannot further share it with anyone else. So I can control the access. 
here i can control allow recipient to share this report if you will click on it he would not be able to share it again this is how you can control the actions click on apply copy the link or directly send it via email now coming to dashboard part for example i have this report okay my for example this report is available with me okay now i want to pin this let me just take another uh, good example this series analysis for example 